now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, it's the Ramble. Hey, it's Alex. Hey, we go until uh, midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen from Massachusetts. God, I'm glad there's somebody in my time zone. Yeah. You know, uh, everybody else I talk to is in another time zone. Bubbles in another oh. time zone. Pearl's in another time zone. Right. Uh, Durst is yet in another time zone. Same time oh. zone. Durst. Oh, Durst. Durst. Uh, let me see. I have another friend in uh, Ohio who I call every now and then. He's not in this time zone. So you're in my time zone. Yeah. What's it? It's it's absolutely gorgeous here today. It's in the 90s. I know. It's a, it's. Let me look at my watch. It's currently 82 here in New York. Right. And occasionally I have to turn on the air conditioner over here, but I try to keep it off because it has a tendency to make a little bit of noise. Well, I'll show people what I'm talking about. Uh, maybe you can't hear it, actually. A lot of people, when I turn this on, say they can't really hear it. Can you hear it? No. No? If I turn the mic up. Can you hear that? See? A little bit. You know, it, it's okay. It's fine. It doesn't, uh, doesn't cause a problem. So, so anyway, how's everything in Massachusetts? Are you guys uh, ma going maskless now, or we um, in twelve days they're going to open up everything a hundred percent? I'm I'm wondering why they do that. Uh, here in New York on Monday, our governor said on Wednesday we're all going to be able to go maskless. Right. Well, what's different from last Monday as opposed to Wednesday? What you what can what can possibly happen? People have to learn how to take their masks off? <laughs> you know, so what? You still, you still have to wear a mask when you go in a store. Not here. No. Uh, unless, unless the store says you have to, you don't. Right. You don't have to. Okay. Okay. Well, every, every, every store I've been in says you have to. Oh, okay. Well, then that's up there. I, I And I, you know something... I'm going to go out today without a mask. I, I, I did it last week when the CDC finally said we didn't have to wear one. I, I went for a walk. I've gone for a walk every day without a mask. Yeah. Uh, I did it without a mask. With me. Yeah. I said it kind of felt like the first time I ever jumped into a pool without my pant my trunks on. You know, went into a really? pool bare ass. You know, that, that free feeling you get, you know, with your balls floating. <laughs> That's an image I don't need. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't, uh, you know, they, they need to float now because as you get older, they start to, right. you know. In fact, I'm going gonna, gonna to have to attach, I think, to my testicles a roller skate pretty soon. No. Just to, you know. Make just sure. to move along, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, I mean, um, uh, I, I felt, it, I took a walk and I felt free. I felt like I could breathe. I felt like right. I, you know, because... When I take walks with the mask on, you get short of breath. Just, right. you know, and then the snot builds up. Everybody talks about the snot building up. Yeah, what's up with that? Is that allergies? Is that the pollen? Well, allergies have mask? something to do with it, but I think it has something to do with just the fact you got a mask on and it's inhibiting your breathing, and so you start drip, your nose starts dripping. However, they don't make these things to accommodate a nose drip. They should have like a built-in tissue or something They blow your nose, <laughs> you know. Uh, or, or I'd be walking down the street when everybody's wearing masks, you're supposed to be wearing masks, and my nose would start dripping, so I'd have to lower the mask in order to wipe it, and everybody's right. looking at me like, why are you lowering your mask? Right, right, so, right, right, right. Sorry, I got a drippy nose, you asshole, you know. Like, it's their business anyway. Well, they, you know, up until recently, I would get pissed off when I saw people without a mask. Oh, me too. Yeah. You know? But you didn't want to. But you didn't dare go up to them and talk to them about it. Right, right. Because they were probably 
uh, Trump supporter, and it was just going to be a waste of time. Well, you know, today, and, and this is being played on a different day than we're recording it, but today in Congress, a group of Republican congressmen refused to wear a mask, okay? As right. making it a political issue, and it's not a political issue. Right. It has nothing right. to do with politics. Whether you're right. left or right, you can still get COVID. And yes, I know things are much better, and your chances of getting COVID aren't that great any longer. But right. let's not tempt fate. Let's not uh, take a, a win and turn it into a lose. You let's know? not poke a sleeping bear. Yeah, we don't want a creeping back. We want to take right. care of it once and for all. And and what they're doing to their constituents is saying something very unhealthy. You know? They're saying to their constituents, eh, go ahead, you don't need to wear a mask. Right. You know, we're not going to wear a mask. We're fighting wearing a mask. Well, if you haven't been vaccinated, wear a mask. If you've been vaccinated, chances are you're not going to get it. You know, what, what about the people that have only gotten one shot and not going back for a second one? Well, they're they are at least have something like seventy five percent protection. Yeah, but why wouldn't you go back? I mean, well, it's I, like it's like putting on half a condom. Right, right. <laughs> hey, there you go. You know, there you go. Uh, or uh, uh, well, what's uh, I can have sex with you because, without a condom because I'm cutting back on my sperm. You know <laughs> what? 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 You know, I mean, right. all I'm saying is that for the safety of the rest of America, they should be passing a message along about, hey, get that vaccine, you know, and, right. and wear a mask if you haven't had the vaccine. I mean, I would agree with these Republican senators if they said, well, we've all been vaccinated, so we don't think we should wear the mask. They have an argument. OK, right. but they won't say who was vaccinated and who wasn't vaccinated. So right. you're not telling us that, then wear a goddamn mask, you moron. Meanwhile, they're not getting uh, the vaccination because supposedly Trump was against it, but Trump got the vaccination. Oh, Trump wasn't against the, va the vaccine. No? No, he wasn't against the va If they're saying that, they're wrong. He, you know, well, why, he why are the Republicans on a whole against the vaccine? Who knows? You know, I mean, it makes no sense. The vaccine obviously works. Right. We have, uh, I don't know, something like, I don't know, uh, how many 300 million people have had it so far? I mean, it's been, a, it's an incredible amount. Over 50% of the population has had right. uh, at least one shot, okay? And the numbers have just plummeted. There are right. 15 states where they didn't have, they didn't record any deaths the day before yesterday. Right. Okay. Doesn't that say that this thing works? Oh, yeah. And that they should be encouraging people to get it. And, uh, you know, for those people who say, well, you know, it's like the Tuskegee experiment, the black people say this. Right. Uh, you know, no, it's not. Because I took it and you took it and a whole bunch of other people took it. And look at us. We're tap dancing. Okay. Right. Well, I'm not, right. ta I'm not tap dancing at my age, but. No, well. You know, I do. A, I do a good waltz clog though. To this day, I still do a good waltz clog. There you go. Yeah. Do you know what a waltz clog is? Did you ever? No, I know what I mean, a waltz is. Oh, oh, so no, so you're uh, uh, a, a, a you never were uh, sent to tap class like I was. No. Yeah, I made it through. I think six uh, sessions of tap dancing class, and I really? learned the waltz clog, and that was it. I'd show it to you only I have to be full body to. You know, I have to show my feet and everything, and right. you know. But it's basically it's a you, if I did it, you'd say, "Oh yeah, I, I've seen that. That's that's the sta It's the standard tap." I know it. I know what it is. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Bum ba da ba dum. Bum bum bum. Bum bum bum. Bum ba da ba dum. Bum ba da ba dum. Bum bum bum. Bum bum bum. Yeah, that's it. I'm doing it without my feet. I'm just doing it with bum yeah. bum bums. Very nice. You people out there didn't know I was that fucking talented, did you? Huh? I'm glad you've retained that information. Not only can I do a talk show, but I can tap dance, too. Well. 
Never ha- you, can, you, can, you can tap dance without getting up. I'm not you, quite sure how that works. You know, for all the time I've been on stage, because I used to introduce all you guys and do, right. do, do a little bit of time myself, I never tap danced for everybody. It, I should have. They would have respected me for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They would have gone wild. You guys would have had more respect for me. Like, he's not just that guy who puts us on the air. He happens to be able to tap dance. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now I have respect. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that would would have changed everything. We we know you could tap dance. You know, when I see a good tap dancer, though, aren't you just awed by it? Yes. I mean, yes. just that they 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 they've so committed themselves to this thing. Uh, it's, it's the thousands of hours of practice mm-hmm. that I, I that just blows me away. Well, let's face it, you've had thousands of hours of practice doing comedy. Yes. You know, so and and and, and don't forget, I trained for seven years before I started doing stand up. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm saying is, is that. When it's something you really want and something you really like, right? Okay, you commit yourself to it. You yeah. know, I committed myself to radio. Right, right, a hundred percent. You're either in or you're, you're out. Either in or you're out. You know. Yeah, you and, can't just dip your toe in the water. And I took a big chance because if I think about all the people who are in radio, who are working in small markets, uh, running small shows just disc jockeys, you know, people like that. To get where I got in my business, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. The the odds of that were exponential. Astronomical. Astronomical. And I managed to do it. I took the chance and I did it. I think I did it, I think I did it for my uncle. Nah, you no, did it for you. No, I did it for my uncle because my uncle, I see, said, "What do you want? What are you going to do in life?" I said, "Well, I'm going to I'm going to be a radio announcer. I'm going to do radio shows." And he looked at me and he said, "You know, you're crazy." You know, right. he said, "Come work for me at the store." He had like a store that sold baby supplies. Right. And he said, "I'll train you in that." And he said, "You could maybe someday take over the business." And I went. I'm going into radio. I'm right, sorry. Right, right, I don't right, want right, to sell. Right. I don't want to sell rattles and diapers. You know. Right. That's uh, like I was selling shoes. Yeah, but the day I was really, I guess, proud of myself was somewhere along the line. I had gotten into the business, and I had been doing the business, and I'd been working in it, and things were getting better and better. And he said to me, "I guess you made the right decision." Well, there you, you know, go. Congratulations. You managed to do it. You know, and I, I felt good about that. I felt really good about that. So, right. You know. Uh, but um, uh, but tap dancing was my... I always wanted to be a tap dancer. No, I didn't. You would have taken. You would have. Been, you would have dedicated yourself. I would have to taken. I would have taken. Mo- I would have taken more than six lessons. Yeah. yeah. That's correct. Then let's see. What did you ever study any instruments? Um, formally study or play? Play and study. Uh, drums. Drums. A little guitar. Uh huh. And a little tiny bit of banjo. Banjo, but banjo is a lot easier to play than most people think, right? Well, I played pre Scuggs, you know, Earl Scruggs came up with that that role with the finger picks. Yeah. And I played the banjo that was before that. It was called claw hammering or frailing a banjo. Yeah. Boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. In other words, you go across all the strings same time you know you're not picking the individual strings no you're thinking of, of a um, four string banjo this is a five string banjo and it's called another term for it is drop thumbing you'd have to like go to YouTube and look up frailing banjos what banjos frailing really yes I will look that up later or or Go and, and uh, just plug in the Carolina chocolate drops. The Carolina chocolate drops? Right. 
Let me write that. Well, I'll remember that. Carolina chocolate drops. Okay. Right. All right. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know, so I, no, I, my parent, my father wanted me, my father was a violinist. Really? So when I was a child, he bought a miniature violin for me. Really? It was a half size. It was like this big. Okay. Right. For a little child to be able to play. And I just sat there in my room. You know, I didn't do anything with it. Never touched so, it. So then I grew, grew up a little bit. My father said, well, you know, the family, everybody in the family were musicians. My aunts, really? my uncles, my, my, you know, everybody. Okay. I, I had a, 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 a cousin uh, who was uh, 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 Marcus Gordon. My middle name is Gordon. I was named after that family. Uh, and he had a wife, Leona, and she was an opera singer. And he really? was a pianist. You know, I mean, that's the family I grew up in. I don't, wow. know if you ever, I don't know if you ever saw Five Easy Pieces with Jack Nicholson, but he's in his family of nothing but musicians, and he isn't one. Right. You know, and that's how I felt. So anyways, I learned the violin, Alex. Okay, so my father sends me off to a violin teacher. And it, I almost think he's like uh, Mel Blanc on the Jack Benny show, you know. <laughs> when he heard me try to play, he was like, you know, God, I'm getting paid for this. I got to get out of here, you know. Right, right, right. I just, I hate, now, number one, I hated the violin because you had to hold it under your chin with your arm up. And I'm right. lazy. <laughs> and I couldn't do that for any extended period of time. I mean, if they had, had like a, oh, I don't know, a violin tripod, maybe I could have learned violin. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. So, that would have worked. So that didn't work. So my father finally said, well, you're not going to be a violinist. And I said, no. Right. He said, okay, anything else you want to learn? I said, well, trombone sounds like a good idea. Why did I pick <laughs> trombone? Well, I picked the trumpet. In the third grade. Well, I mean, what's the old joke about what's the difference between a trombone player and a snake trying to cross the road? Everybody aims at the trombone player. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, uh -huh. you know. So I, I, uh, I my, my father uh, got me a trombone. Really? Yeah, and I, again, started to learn it, but I didn't. You know, what I liked about the trombone was the spit valve. I'd like to I like to play it enough so I could hit the spit valve and a whole bunch of my drool would fall on the ground. That was same the only thing, thing I liked. Trumpet. If same all I had, with, hmm? it's the same thing with the trumpet. It's got a spit valve. Yeah, yeah. And if if all I had to do was uh, to play the trombone was to use the spit valve, I think I would have been a well a, a, a great trombone player. But unfortunately. I had to actually play the damn thing, and then you get what they call an embouchure. It's the way you purse. Right, right, people, right, right, right. People don't, who don't play those instruments, excuse me, my eyes are, uh, today it's allergies. Um, an embouchure is when a trumpet player or a trombone player puts his mouth over the, the, the trombone or trumpet and goes, Basically, that's it. That's what they're doing. They're making that right. noise. But they're making it into the trumpet, and it comes out as a note. Right. Okay. So I, I got a pretty good embouchure. I, I learned how to get an embouchure. Really? But I was, I just, again, I had to hold the trombone up. And it's a big instrument. Yeah. So I then, I taught myself a little piano. Taught myself right. a little piano. And uh, that was it for me, you know. And I went to radio, and one day my father said to me, you know something? He says, I'm sorry you never learned an instrument, but you play a turntable better than I play the violin. So, Wow. You know. Uh, and, and, Isn't that nice? Yeah, I was still a disc jockey when he said that. So, yeah. Explain to me why people go to a concert to watch a disc jockey. Well, because they happen to be younger than we are. I, I mean, I don't get it. They're I, just uh, up there uh, spinning records. The day, the first day I knew I was getting old, I was at Live 105. I was in my 40s, okay? Right. And they said, we have this guy, and he's coming in, and he's one of the biggest musicians around. 
And I said, oh, great, we'll send them in. They send them in, and they set up two turntables. And he sits there scratching with the turntables. Right. And I'm sitting there watching this thing. You know, When's he going to play? Right. You know, what's he doing? He's taking other people's music. He's playing it for a little bit, and then he's backing it up. You know, we used to, in radio, we used to, when we used turntables, nobody uses turntables anymore, but when all we had were turntables and not these cartridge machines, and then later on, I guess it's, you know, it's being done by, uh, by, by digital. Right. We had to put a turn record on a turntable. Right. And then there were like 10 different tracks or five different tracks on each side, and you'd find the track you wanted, and, and you then, had to cue it up. And then you had to cue it up, and what you would do is you would literally scratch it. That's how it sounded, like there's like uh, a, a DJ today scratching, and right. you would go rum, 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 until you got it to a certain point, just a little bit beforehand. And then you stop the turntable from from rotating, and then right. you would go in here, so and so, and then you would hit the switch, and the turntable would go. And by the time it got up to speed, which was usually pretty fast with those professional turntables, right. uh, the record started playing. That's how right. you did it. You had to cue every record you were going to play up. You had a record library, too, and you had to go in the record, record library and, and pick out what you were going to play. Right, and you had to know what track you were going to play. Right. You know, but, I mean, you, you also, sometimes you forgot to cue up the next record, so you had to do it while you were talking on the air, and somehow I learned how to do it by feeling it, and also you could make it so you could hear the turntable in one ear while you were hearing the show in the other. Right, and right, 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 right. But that's how, that's how we queued up records. Right. Uh, nobody has to queue up records anymore. When I first heard scratching, I went, he's doing nothing but queuing up records. Right, basically. Yeah, I mean, I did that for years, and nobody but ever how, gave me why, in. Why it. does that draw a crowd I mean, I'm not, I mean, there's scratches that ha have to do with hip hop, right? Right, right. Okay, that I get. I don't get just the person with two turntables attracting okay. the crowd. Between you and me, I agree with you. Uh, I do understand hip hop, that kind of stuff. Sampling, right. sampling records and then doing some kind of rap to it. That I right. understand. That I, I, I get that, that. That I admire in many cases. But right. somebody with a fucking turntable, you know. Well, two turntables. Two turntables. You know, what's the talent there? I know, folks, I'm sounding like an old man. Write me, tell me. I want to know. So does Steve. Well, he's, I feel he's the, the same guy over way. there, right there. What? I feel the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 so we're old. That's the reason why. Otherwise, we'd be at one of those concerts, trying to get laid, obviously. That's the only reason you went to concerts. Right, or, or we would have been the DJs. Oh, yeah, well, that's, yeah, that, that, that too. Right. I don't know, could we, I don't know if I, even as an instrument, I could use a turntable as an instrument. I don't think I'd be very good at it. No, I don't know, I, 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 I don't get it. I mean, it's, it's that simple, Alex, I just plain don't get it. Well, people dance to it too you know right so he's you know djs i can kind of understand djs in clubs right that because I they, get. they pick the music you're going to play and they create the atmosphere <gasps> in the room right you know but i as you say i don't understand uh these guys are just scratching away you know but they're and, doing concerts you, they're doing concerts. I know they're doing concerts. Hey, listen, I don't understand why I'm sitting here with five people watching me and some 13-year-old who's giving makeup tips is getting a million views. I want an answer to that one. Oh, wow. You know, I'm working my ass off to do the best show I possibly can, and she's saying, and then you, you, you put a little eyeliner down here, and it's going to take the... It's going to highlight your eyes. Oh, one million views. She's so terrific. Are you serious? I'm absolutely serious. Look, go on the web. Say, who are the most uh, highest rated uh, podcasts? And you will find that there are people there doing makeup tips. You know? I makeup think, tips. It, we get to put a tag on our shows. You know, it says what the show is about. So if somebody types in, like, Alex Bennett, it will show up. Right. So I'm thinking of doing a tag just as hashtag makeup tips. 
and see how many viewers I get. Yeah, really? Yeah. Makeup tips uh, and hot sex. Hot sex. That would be another one. Uh, <laughs> come here for some hot sex, okay? Hey, I just looked at the clock. Do you know we've gone for over 24 minutes now? No. No. I know. It's amazing, isn't it? Uh, you're, you're so easy to talk to. I could do a whole two hours with you. Sure. You know? Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be a problem. But yeah. I mean, we really should go on and just say, fuck my uh, my uh, citizen panel. And, uh, you know. But uh, we, we, we have other... What, uh, quickly, I'll, I'll just go over. Fuck it. What, what, who else don't you understand? What other things don't you understand? What, what don't I understand? Yeah, I mean, like... like the playing turntables. I don't understand or see the entertainment in slasher movies. Really? Okay. All right. I I don't I don't get them. I don't want that. I don't like horror movies. Mm -hmm. None of that. Yeah, but you know what I don't understand? What's that? Joe Rogan. Why is this guy so popular? He was a terrible comedian. Right. And he's not that good a broadcaster. And he gets a well, million dollars from Spotify to be exclusively on Spotify. I don't know. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not in If I was in charge, we'd both be making a lot of money. Yeah, but we're not in charge. Right. So, so can, uh, you know, uh, who knows? So can you loan me a few bucks? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I wish. Anyway, let's do this again next week. This is just so I, enjoyable. I just love talking with you and just chat. Yeah. If we chat. You know? We do. We really do. Ladies and gentlemen, that there, that guy that you're looking at, that's Steve Kravitz. Goodbye, Steve. Goodbye, Alex. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Eh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, everybody. How are you? I hope you enjoyed that. I love talking with him. I just, you know, there's something about Steve that, as I say, I could talk to him for two hours. I mean, oh, you know what I didn't do? There, there there's my lights. I forget to turn on the lights. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm forgetting all kinds of things. I, I, I suddenly realized yesterday, you know, we had this on-demand thing, and I didn't post yesterday's shows on the on demand thing i had them all made up but they didn't they didn't they didn't post so uh i was at dinner tonight I, we went out to dinner for the first time in uh, a long time well we did this a couple of weeks ago too uh, some other restaurant but there's a restaurant we in the neighborhood that we always went to and liked and always worried about actually uh and um so we uh we immediately uh, had uh, went out and had dinner tonight, and as I was out at dinner, I suddenly noticed on my phone that I hadn't post. I posted yesterday's shows when I posted them today. So anyway, if you couldn't find the show, oh, nobody cares. It, it, not that many people anyway care. So I'm not gonna do anything about it. Anyway, uh, let me uh, let me see here. What do I want to do here? I want to admit all. Okay, I want to admit all these people uh, so that they can come on here. See them jumping in like crazy. There we go. Uh, waiting for Charlie Wallace. We got St uh, Trucker Steve, and we got Jeff, and we got Alan, and we got me. Come on, Charlie. Where are you? Join us. Hello, guys. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Yeah. You doing, you doing all right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. At dinner and cigars with Phil Meyer. Did you really? Yep. Yeah. Up in Walnut Creek. I hope you didn't talk politics. A little bit. A little bit. Oh, jeez. Yeah. You know. Uh, <clears throat> and and what 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 politics did you talk? Uh, well, you know, he told me how great Trump was, and I told him I don't think so. I don't know. We we talked about a lot of different things. So as we, I, I just I don't you know I I just, that just boggles me. It boggles my mind. I don't understand any of it. Um, why people can feel that way? Well, because everybody thinks differently, huh? 
Uh, well, everybody thinks differently. Well, Would that, you want all the people in this world to think just like you? Yeah, but, to, you know, yeah. all you have to do is be, I mean, you know, Phil is not a stupid guy. No, far all right? from it. Re, you know, far from it. He's Absolutely. not stupid. But, man, you know, how can you not be stupid and think Trump is a good idea? Yeah, okay. Well, I, as liberal-minded person that I am, I agree with you there, yeah. but everybody thinks different. I mean, I have some really good friends that are Republicans. And most of them aren't as committed as he is, but some, you know, and uh, I like having friends that don't think the way I do all the time. Well, you know, I mean, look, I understand that maybe you're a Republican and you're bothered by the fact that uh, you don't want people to think that your guy was terrible. Okay, right? You know. Sure. Uh, but there's a limit to that. I mean, how much are you gonna let the guy get away with before you say, eh, you know, that's a, that's the most I'm gonna put up with, you know? Uh, well, if it's not a very good friend, then you say that. But when you're when it feels like a mentor and a good friend to me, and I, I would never say that to him, based on what he thinks differently. Well, I mean. You you've known him a long time, Alex. Longer yeah. than I have. Longer well, I've long, I've known him long enough to be able to call him a moron. <laughs> you know, I mean, it it, it it it. The point is that I just don't understand it. You know, I mean, as a, as a, I hope intelligent person myself, I just don't understand how anybody. I can see how somebody in the beginning wanted to vote for him and believed in him and thought he was a good idea. But when you look at, at what he did while he was in office, which was practically nothing, all what right, did, and the way did. it ended up, which was just horrendous. I mean, he was trying to take over this country by coup. You know, and why you can't admit that that's the case and just say, well, you know, I backed the wrong guy. You know, next time, hopefully, I'll have better judgment. All right? And nobody's going to hold that against you, and it doesn't make you a, a horrible person. But when you doggedly keep going with this guy, I mean, how much how much does he have to be? Does he finally have to wind up in prison before Phil will admit it? I, I, if he ends up in prison, a lot of Trump supporters will still support Trump. I guess. I guess. Uh, you know, like uh, Jeff loves Trump. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And uh, uh, Ray's a big guy. But where's your MAGA hat tonight, Ray? Uh, I, I thought I'd just take one night off from Trump. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's the cult of personality. That's what that's what it's called. You know, well, like I'm, for all the. Yeah. That's what the Trump thing is. It's the personality. It's the cult. They, they, they look up to him because they wish they could be like him. Do what he wants, say what he wants, no rules. They love that. Yeah, but I mean, is is that a good idea for a president? I mean, is that what you wanted? No, a president? It's, it's insane. But you know, yeah. it's just nuts. I mean, the scary the scary thing is okay, and I probably won't live to see it because I'm getting along in years. Okay, uh, but. I think given enough time, there'll be another Trump that comes along that's a little smarter at it, okay, and a little more conniving. And it's going to happen all over again. Would you disagree with that, Charlie? That's scary. Unfortunately, no. I think you're right, and I hope I don't live to see it. I mean, the fact that we got rid of Trump this time was because of an overwhelming urge on the part of the American public to, to get him out of there. Uh, and and so, there, so it, people made a concerted effort, okay? It, it actually surprised me how many people voted for him. V voted for Trump? Mm. Talking oh. about the first time. It, it, second time. Second time. Yeah. I yeah, mean, that's, he that's didn't, right. He didn't win either time by the popular vote, by the yeah, way. Yeah, but that's not what we count. So. But that's not what we count. So Until we change that. So. Yeah. But we managed to win the electoral vote this time, too. And, and by and the way, what, what are they trying to do in Arizona? I mean, let's say they discount that vote. Let's say it went for Trump. Boom. Uh, so uh, he still, uh, Biden still wins. Yeah. Well, what, what does Arizona have? Six electoral college votes? Uh, no, it had something like 12. I think it's like nine or 10. Is or it? Like yeah, something like that. 
you know, it, it's, it's not, not going to change company. anything. And they're not doing anything in Georgia. That might change things. Phil at Pennsylvania would change things, but they're going down to Arizona to count ballots, you know. What, 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 what's with that? Okay, so they, they say, hey, it wasn't. And even at that, the state of Arizona has to admit, oh, this is a good idea. We better, you know, we better go along with this. But anyway, it's ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Okay. There, Oh, there's a little dog without a leash. And it's gone. gone. Does he She's have... fetching. Oh, just... There she comes. There she comes. There she is. Oh, she's getting tired. She doesn't want to bring me the ball all the way. Yeah. Oh, oh, you have to go. She... You have to go get the ball for the dog. Well, once she gets tired, that's what she does. Go. Oh. How many more years has that dog got before he can get one that can fetch? Whoa. Oh, this dog will <laughs> fetch all day long. All day long. Look at her. Yeah. Oh. Woo. Hello, Kathleen. We can only see your eyes. There Much we go. Much better. Much better. Much better. Yeah. I like your hairstyle, the new hairstyle. She got a new hairstyle? I don't no. know. Yeah. She's always had that <laughs> hairstyle. You know. She always had long blonde locks and bagels. Thank you, Al. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Alex. You. Alan. Ellis. Thank you, Katie. Alex. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you throwing? Is the dog going after the ball? Yeah. And is it, the dog bringing it back to you at all? Yeah, yeah. She brings it back every time. I'm just walking. I, I get. To, I, I walk and I throw. That way, I get some exercise. So oh. She runs after the ball and she oh, comes back to me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, huh? Well, I, I ran. I walked again today for another two oh. miles. Yeah, for another two miles around the Harlem Mirror. <laughs> And uh, got my got my exercise. Uh, and it's uh, you know it's, it's pretty good. I took my nice <laughs> pill last night, so it was easier for me to walk. And uh, you know, so uh, so anyway, what what's the puppy's name again? Foxy. Fo Foxy. Uh, Foxy. Yeah. Foxy, like a fox. What 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 is she barking at? She wants me to throw the ball, and I'm not going to. I'm going to go home because it's freezing out here. Oh, I oh. see. It's freezing out in out in California. It's wow. very windy well, in the Bay Area right now. It's it's like 50 degrees, which is Ooh. freezing for us. We yeah. were up, we were up around. But it's windy. It's windy, so it feels colder than. Yeah, <laughs> very windy. Very windy. Yeah, the temperature yeah. was up in the 80s today, and now it's down to 71. So the scary the scary thing is the lack of water we've had and the winds. Mm -hmm. uh, here, come, here come the uncontrolled fires again. Oh, really? Yep. God. We have flooding here in Texas. Really? Yeah, it's been raining for the last week, just pouring. Why don't Damn, you talk I to whoever in charge? Have them send the rain over here, Charlie. Hmm. Wish I could. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask. Uh, let me ask uh, uh, Schmoody. Uh, how's your son doing? How's he adapting to his new environs? He loves it here. Yeah, and is he, he's going to school up there, right? Uh, no, actually, he's st still doing online out of Tracy Unified. Oh, I wow. you know something? That's a really good thing. I stopped, didn't stop to think about that. But you could move, and you wouldn't have to pull him out of his other school. Exactly. Where did you move to, Kathleen? Uh, the Mendocino Coast, Gualala. Gualala. Oh, wow, that's beautiful there. Yeah. I love it there. Yeah. Uh, so he, Watch out for the floods. Though. That's You know something? That's really interesting. I didn't stop to think about that. Of course, next year he won't be able to do it because he'll probably have everybody going back to school again. Yeah, he'll probably... Um, I sent away from so, for some information from um, Connections Academy. Connections Academy? Yeah, because he'd rather do online school than... Because um, the nearest school here is like 30 miles away. Okay. All right. How old is he? How old is he? Fifteen. So he's what? He's a junior. He'll no. He'll be a sophomore next year. A sophomore next year. Okay. Yep. Nice. And and um, um, yeah. So it's thirty miles away is the closest school. Pretty much. So you'd have to drive him there every day. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Well, <laughs> well, Gualala is just a long road to the ocean. 
Yeah. Over there near Jenner, right? Yeah, I'm like not. I, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm not going to take. Yeah. I'm not going to take the kid thirty miles to school every day. Fuck that! I'll sell him first. <laughs> you know. You're, you're north <laughs> of Jenner, right? Another kid. You're well, north of Jenner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's very nice up there. Very nice and very small. Gualala, yes. the city, is uh, what? It's got a bar. That's about it. I remember a correctly. Hotel, a couple grocery stores, some other shops and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Where's the closest big gro grocery store? Uh, would be Guerneville. Guerneville. I used to call Gurnville it Guerneville or Fort Bragg. When wow. I was a, when I was a kid, I used to call it Gurneyville. Yeah, it's but it is Guerneville, isn't it? Yes. Where, where the Russian River runs. Yep. Yes. And uh, my father used to play with bands up at Russian River during the summer. So many really? times during the summer, we would go up to the uh, Russian River, and my father would play a gig or something, and uh, we would stay at a resort up there. So that was my, you know, my situ my my summers. Then I also spent my summers many times at uh, Lake Tahoe because my father worked yeah. at Cal Neva Lodge, and then then this is even more fun. Sometimes the band would go to L.A. and he would play the Coconut Grove. And while he was rehearsing, I'd be running around trying to climb these phony trees in the Coconut Grove. So, <laughs> yeah. Did you hang out with Ricky Ricardo? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but I did, uh, I did hang out with my father when he was working with Frank and the Brat Pack at Cal Neva. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you know, I mean, I never went in to see the show uh, because they didn't give, they didn't comp the band any, you know, any tickets. Uh, and uh, in fact, I remember that was where I had my first drink with my father. As you know, I'm not a drinker. I just alcohol has eluded me most of my life. Well, you know, Kathleen, did you ever yeah. see me drink? Nope. No. But better living through drugs, right, Alex? You never saw me ever do any drugs, right? Anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> she's, she's silent. Suddenly, she's quiet. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so my father, I'm, I love telling this story because my father was, so we were sitting at the bar at the Cal Neva after the show, and I do remember that Sammy and Dean and uh, Frank were in a side room uh, partying, but you could see them. They were all partying and everything. And my father says to me, he says, you know something I'd like you to do? I said, what? Have a drink with your old man before he dies, okay? You know, uh, I'm not getting any younger, and I'd like to have a drink with my son. And I said, sure, Dad, I'll be happy to do that. So he said, what are you going to have to drink? And I said, I don't know, I'll have whatever you're having. So he said, uh, Jack Daniels on the rocks, two. And uh, my father takes a sip off of his, and then I grab my glass, and I take a sip off of mine, and I immediately go, oh, my God, this tastes like shit. <laughs> and my father said, and you thought I was having fun all these years. <laughs> You were how old? Four? <laughs> no, I was. I had hit twenty-one, so he said. Nice. And then I went over to one of the uh, gambling tables and hit twenty-one. So it was very good. It was a theme night. Uh, so the Rat Pack played in Count Count Neva was an awfully small casino. Uh, not I, really. Well, it was. It was a resort. Okay, and a very nice resort. Beautiful. Yeah, they, they, they were famous in in the 70s and 80s for their 99 cent steak and eggs. I, I remember when I was in high school, I was a big, Cal Neva was kind of like a big deal to go to. Cal Neva was the big deal. The, yeah. The South Shore was considered low rent. Yeah, definitely. You know, with Harrah's and stuff like that. And uh, then, uh, uh, what do you call it, moved in? Caesar's Palace moved in up there. Mm -hmm. And that kind of changed the whole nature of North versus South Shore, but when it was when it was Cal Neva and Sinatra bought it, I mean that was the place to be, that was the place to go. You wanted to one of the 
Hmm? One of the casinos up there had somebody roll up a bomb in the casino. You can actually see it detonated on YouTube. The FBI comes in, looks at it, and decides that, you know, it's like on the 14th floor that it's too dangerous to move. We'll blow it up here. So they cleared everybody out of the hotel and the casino and moved everybody back a mile back. And you can see cameras. The, the what was that, a Cal TV. Neva? A Cal Neva? I, it might have been. I, I forget uh, which hotel. I don't it was think at so. State Line. It was at Harrah's at State Line. Harrah's. Harrah's oh, okay, State well, let's see. Let's see. Other, so they, the blast was enough to blow open the safe vault door. Like, <laughs> you know, on the ground level. So you can imagine. Oh, when was that? Like 75 or something yeah, like that? Yeah, something like that. It was, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Was some, what, who did it? Was it a terrorist organization or? No, I'm sure you know, somebody was going to. Uh, I, I don't uh, know. <laughs> I don't know. Bad cat. <laughs> cat wants my ice cream. <laughs> hey, Alex. Yeah. Did, didn't, you, didn't you used to have Paul Mooney on your show? Way back well, I was going to talk about Paul Mooney tonight. Yeah. yeah. I was going to talk about Paul. Uh, Paul Mooney. I, anybody know who Paul Mooney is? Anybody familiar with Paul yeah. Mooney? I saw, I saw him with Chris Rock. He opened for Chris Rock. Yeah. Paul, okay. Paul Mooney died today. Oh, heart attack uh, at his home. He used to do your show all the time. Yeah, at his home at his home in Oakland. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, I got to tell you about Paul Mooney. Uh, I I always liked Paul. Paul was not the easiest person in the world, you know. Uh, but I always enjoyed what he had to do. I always thought he was doing something important. He used to write for Pryor. Um, he uh, w w wrote for in, Li in Living Color. What? Red Fox. Red Fox Show. Did he write for Red Fox Show? Yeah. You know, he wrote for the Richard Pryor Show, the short-lived Richard Pryor Show, and was on it, too. Uh, he was, a, but the thing that he did for me that just you know, solidified him with me. I, I knew him, and I, but I, did, I, did, I didn't know him like I was real pals. You know, like I'm pals with Bubbles or I'm pals with a lot of the other people that we have on here. Uh, but uh, he would do the show in San Francisco quite often, and when I finally wound up working at Sirius XM, I had the opportunity to have him on. And there were these two guys, Opie and Anthony, who ran a show at Sirius XM over across the hall from me. And they didn't like me. And uh, so Paul Mooney's a guest on their show. And somehow the subject of me comes up and they start putting me down, saying horrible things about me. And Paul Mooney says, stop it. And they said, why? And he said, you two guys wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for Alex Bennett. Sure. You know, he made the coast clear for people like you to do what you're doing. And how dare you put him down? And then he came over to my studio and told me what he had done. He got up and walked out. Mm -hmm. wow. That was the biggest solid I think anybody's ever done for me in the business. Nice. I mean, uh, and he did, did they have respect for you after that, Alex? Were yeah. They, were they more? Somewhat more. At least yeah. one of them, uh, okay. Anthony, I think, had a little more respect for me. But I mean, it was because um, it was Opie that was the prick, you know. Uh, but I mean, it was just the nicest thing anybody had done. For, and this was a guy who didn't owe me anything, you know. He wasn't one of the guys who benefited from being on my show in San Francisco. He just was on it and he enjoyed it. Uh, but. Uh, you know, I just, uh, I, when he did that, I just went, boy, what a solid. He didn't have to do that, and yet he was that aware of what I had done and the the importance of maybe the minor importance that I had to the comedy business that he wanted to tell them, hey, you can't say that, you know, and then got up and walked out. So that's how I remember Paul Mooney. Great guy. Yes, uh, Alan. What? I can't hear you. You're muted. Great point. Yeah, sorry. I I have uh, I have uh, no idea who Paul Mooney is. Who was he? I just told you. He's just oh, okay. he's a, he was a local comedian. comedian. He was a, he's a comedian. He was he's good. 
I like him because he made everybody uncomfortable, or at least the white people. Yes, so I yes, think it's yes. And um, that, that's what I liked very, about very, him. Uh, very truthful, and, but in a comedic way to educate you and to make you think. And, and like I said, to make certain people uncomfortable. And I was fine with it because it educated a lot. At times know, so. when I watched Paul Mooney, I wondered if he was a comedian. If you could exactly mm-hmm. describe him as that. Right. Because yep. what he did was so different and so unusual. Yeah. And um, I just always, I always liked him. I always thought he was terrific. You know, always thought he was terrific. And 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 Alex, I mean, the bringing comedians. I mean, the, there was that time, that window, you know, that that you had, especially I think at Live One Hundred Five. But I mean, nobody was bringing on comedians, and not to say that you launched all these comedians, but I mean, all the comedians you had from Robin Williams and from all these guys. I mean, they wouldn't have had the publicity that they had without you right they had like all these morning well, zooms what, on yeah. and all these stupid shows that were trying to be funny themselves and not letting the comedians be themselves well the other problem was a lot of these morning zoos would take in a, a comedian have a comedian come on their show and then they would sit there during the break and go now you tell a joke and then i'll tell a joke and then you tell a joke and then i'll tell a joke <laughs> and i always found that horrible because what i did is i brought him in and i said Go ahead, be funny. You know, I'm going to be here tomorrow. I don't need to get the, I, I don't need to get the joke, yeah. to make the joke. Mm. And uh, uh, so uh, comedians love my show because they they felt this freedom to not perform. In other words, I don't want you coming in and doing your act. Yeah. You know, just come in good. and, that's what was, and that's be what you. I liked about your show. Yeah. It, it was freeform, you know. It was just got like a bunch of guys just rapping about whatever the news was. Yeah, well, I, as I said, I, I kept saying to him that, you know, you don't, you're not required to be funny, <coughs> you know. If you happen to be, fine, you know. But just we're having a conversation here and just have the kind of conversation you'd have. And what it turned into, you know, comics when they're together start riffing with each other. What they're doing is they're practicing material and trying it out on each other. And that's essentially what happened with my show, is that when I get these comedians together, they'd start riffing off of one another. If you want to see a perfect example of that today, watch comedian and co- comedians in cars getting coffee. That's exactly what's happening between Seinfeld and the people he has on that show, is that they're riffing off of each other. And, and I, it's very reminiscent of what I remember, you know, going through and seeing. Was Seinfeld ever funny? Seinfeld? Seinfeld yeah. may be the one of the best comics that ever lived. Really? I, I guess I don't get his humor. Well, I mean, he is, uh, he's amazing. He's amazingly okay. good, you know. Um, uh, he's, he's a, he's a, what do they call it? He's a tactician. He's a mechanic. You know, he has a process, and he uses that process. And if you watch him, he never, ever, Uses a dirty word in his act. Right. <laughs> Com- cleanest act in the business. That's why when he did the TV show, which was maybe one of the dirtiest TV shows ever done, <laughs> everybody was completely surprised. I mean, whole a- episodes on masturbation for crying out loud. You know? I mean, king of the do- with the king master of, the of my own domain. Master- yeah, master of the domain. There master, master of my own domain. Are you yeah. still the master of your domain? <laughs> See, I always thought Rodney Dangerfield was the funniest or one of the funniest comedians. Dangerfield was funny. He was funny in a different way. I mean, you know, they're different kind of comics and they do different kind of things. I mean, I'm sorry that you don't like Seinfeld because I think he does. I didn't say I don't like him. I just don't find him funny. I, I think he's very, very funny. You know, but what's lovely about the show Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee is that he also defers to the comic he has on and lets them riff, you know, let them do their uh, thing, uh, which is very hard for most comics to do. Like I found, they found that uh, every time anybody wanted to find a competitor for me in San Francisco, they would immediately go out and hire a comedian and say, ah, if, Be- if Bennett has comedians on, having a comedian on every morning will be fit the bill. And so they put on comedians, and comedians didn't know how to do what I did because what they did, I never competed against the comedians because I wasn't a comedian myself. 
Uh, and so I just my I played straight man to them. Hmm. That was that was my the thing I did best was play. I was the world's greatest straight man. Uh, uh, and if if they hired a comic to do a show, he would then bring in the comics, and he'd want to be the funny one. And uh, that didn't work. That that wasn't they, when they were trying to compete with me. That isn't the way you compete with me. And uh, so I, you know. What we had going in San Francisco, that show was very special. The, yeah. There was never anything like it. There will never be anything like it again. It was perfect for the moment that it happened. I don't think if I went back to San Francisco tomorrow, I could ever recreate that, you know. Or, or, they, or, or, they, huh? they don't have any local shows anymore in San Francisco. It's all, uh, you know pre-recorded crap well i mean the radio has changed okay yeah. and the kind of show i did where every morning i had a live studio audience yeah uh that we brought in uh and uh, people would sit there and uh, because i felt to have comedians on to try and be funny it's best when you have an audience because then you're not fooling anybody into thinking you're funny you gotta be funny mm -hmm. and um uh, and the comedians loved having those people there too because they could play to them and so on. They felt comfortable. And uh, today, if I wanted to do a show and have a live studio audience, no way any radio station would let me do that. We can't have just people come in off the street. You know, we have to have guards and we have to have police here. And, you know, uh, we don't know. We can't let people in. So I, could, I wouldn't be able to do it today. Just wouldn't be able to do it today, and I wouldn't want to. I, you know, I did that once. It worked. It's something people have fond memories of, and let's leave it that way, you know. So, whatever, you know. I I remember you, Alex, in Florida. You really do. You remember that? I was there. You actually blinked. If you blinked, it was. I know. know. It's like bloop. I was kind of the Liechtenstein of 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 radio shows. Uh, you, you go to ever been to Liechtenstein? If you go through Liechtenstein and blink, you miss the country. You know, that's the way it was with me. And, and I was only there for like three months, and I I wound up just uh, walking out. I hated that. Oh God, I hate that. And then San Francisco realized that they missed you, and you went back there and got rehired, huh? Well, the the, it, the, the general managers had changed. Oh. And the old general manager said, this place has turned into a ghost town. We better do something about it. Let's hire Alex Bennett back. And I had been gone for like 10 months, and so enough time had passed, and I just I came back, you know. And then they wow. rehired me, and then they they yeah. asked me to leave again years, a couple of years later. I think you're a San Francisco gem. Huh? I think you're a San Francisco gem. I think you uh, you really did San Francisco radio a lot of good. I, I think it's that era of comedians in all. I mean, when you go look, like I said, you go look back at all those comedians that were there, so young, and, and so that, and that was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, and they were good comics too. Yeah, I mean, Robin it, Williams. Well, what happened was all this thing, this whole thing, kind of uh, exploded at the same time. San Francisco became a magnet for comedians, and the comedy scene opened up at the same time that I was starting to do radio in San Francisco. So we fed off each other, and and the combination was uh, was something pretty damn uh, pretty damn good. You know, if I do say so myself. And like it says on my Facebook page, I used to be a big shot, you know. So I, I like Ray's green screen. He's wearing a green jacket. It matches it well. Yeah, he's got the same green screen I have. Does he? Oh. Yeah, I bought it. I bought it. I returned the other one. I got the one you have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good night, guys. I gotta go. I gotta go too. I gotta go. Look, Half time's over. You gotta Warriors go. Warriors by thirteen. Gotta go. What? You gotta go. Why? Why do you have to go? Uh, that basketball thingy. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well. Goodbye. See you guys right. tomorrow night. See, see you tomorrow right. night. I got it. Yes, yes, yes. I, okay. Uh, yeah. I'm watching right. it right here. I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I gotta go too. Why? See why do? You, why do you have to go? Because uh, my wife wants me to eat dinner with her. You have a note from her that we can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, well, let's say goodbye to Ray Renati's pussy whip. Bye, Bye Ray. Bye, yeah. Bye Ray. Bye. Anybody want to take his place? Just go over to gabnet.net. Over on the right hand side of the page says click here to zoom the program and you can be on the program. I could use a couple of more. Uh, we have Kathleen. Uh, can you share that with the rest of us? What are you having? What are you having? What is that? What is that? I think she's eating ice cream. Is that ice cream? It's ice cream with peanut butter. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, and really? You're going to share it with everybody, right? Now, how do you manage to keep your weight in check? Well, I'm working out about three hours a day. Really? You really yep. must have nothing to do. No, I have a lot to do. But I break it between, I break it an hour and a half and an hour and a half. Really? Yep. And, and, uh, and, it, and that keeps the weight off? Yeah. Oh, okay. What do you do? Do you do some running and things like that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Weightlifting and uh, quite a bit of jump roping. Oh, really? Yeah. So you, I think that'd be neat on the show. Why don't you show us how you jump rope? I'm sure you <laughs> <laughs> And then run it in slow motion. I don't, I don't boom, think I can jump rope anymore. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you, you would really like that, wouldn't you, Alan? You I would. dirty I old would. man. <laughs> I'm a dirty old man. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Youngster. right, right. But, uh, no, I mean, I, I wouldn't want her to do jump rope here, you know, because... I wouldn't do it. She'd knock herself out. Uh-huh. Oh! <laughs> Put an eye out with that. With the jump rope or something else? Hmm? <laughs> No, it, well, well, I mean, put her eye out with just, the jump rope it, it has to do with the dynamics yeah. of the, of, of, the, oh, of the, you know, and hitting yourself. The body and things bounce around. I get it. Bodies in motion. I have an itch in my nose. Um, and, uh, yes. and where is Trucker Steve tonight? Let me guess. Um, you were in Iowa. You were in Gary, oh. Indiana. And which way were you going? Home or were you going out? Home. home. So you're probably... Um, Somewhere near Chicago? Nope. No, probably Detroit. Where, nope. where are you? Toronto. Oh, you are in Toronto. Oh. Okay, so you're almost home. I'm just about, I'm just uh, half a block from the yard, and I'm oh. using the internet at the truck stop here to be on the show. Oh, oh, wow. So you're, you, you, you're going to be home, and how long are you home for this time? Uh, actually, I'm going to do another short trip, mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow and Friday, and then I'll go home because I got a, my vaccine appointment on Monday. Oh, okay. Do you ever just get... So that's why I'm not yeah. running, that's yeah. why I didn't go west. Right. I'm just running short. Do you ever get just tired of, of, of driving all the time? I mean, I would just... After a while, it would drive me crazy. But then again, it's not what I would do for a living. Short oh. trip. Did you? you uh, yeah. It can it can get boring sometimes. Yeah. Nobody likes my comedy uh, anymore. What? Nobody likes what? My comedy anymore. I didn't know you ever did comedy oh, on this show. This is a hard <laughs> group. <laughs> It, it's a, it's said, a, it's said, a, it's said, a rough house, rough, rough house, yeah. A rough crowd. <laughs> a rough crowd. <laughs> tough crowd, tough crowd. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you said something about it would drive you nuts. I said it's a short trip. Oh. <laughs> now he gets it. Okay, that's okay. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. I, I would ask you to explain it, but if it's funny, you don't have to explain them. Well, Charlie laughed. That was good. And there's a smile on Jeff's face. Yeah, there is a smile. I think, I think he got it, too, even though his mic's off. Yeah. Well, I mean, now I have to rely on your comedy because Ray's gone and, uh, and, and Brian is gone. You know. And nobody has decided to join us. Yeah, what's going on? You need on? to advertise that on, like, uh, Wednesdays there's going to be uh, titties and hot sex. Or something like that. <laughs> and you'll have a hundred people coming on just to watch that. We gotta get a celebrity on like Trump. Well <laughs> you're funny, John. Well you, you see if, if I if I if I showed titties, uh, they would demonetize me. 
Yeah. Now. And really? they would probably kick me off of, off of, uh, off of, uh, um, Jabnet. And, oh, YouTube. 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 You yeah. know, I, I, I posted something in 2017 and again in 2018 on Facebook. And the other day they sent me a message that it doesn't meet their criteria. Boy, it's good they're right on top of it. What, what's this doesn't meet their criteria? <laughs> on Facebook, I posted a picture of Donald Trump with a gag in his mouth. And the gag looked like a sexual gag. And in 2017, they said it doesn't meet their criteria because it's sexual in nature. And then I posted something else in 2018, and, and just this week. They've said they're, they're going through their old files and saying, this doesn't meet our criteria, so we've taken it off. I'm like, and then they want to know if I agree with it or I want to fight it. I'm like, I don't want to fight it. I'm sure, I agree with it. It was three years ago. It's nice to know that Facebook's on top of things. Facebook, all of them are, are difficult to deal with. Oh, you know, man. there's a limit to what I can do here. You know, and you own the place. Yeah, you know what I was thinking of doing. This is uh, I, I, just for the fun of it. I was thinking of um, taking audio from porn films. Ooh, ah, uh, and ooh, and running uh. it, running it on GabNet on the live feed one night. Just you know, overnight. Just a lot of people oh, yeah, having baby, orgasm. Slow, ba baby, slow. baby, more, more now, now. Right, right. Do it. <laughs> you know. Stuff that I know is kind of verbal, has enough moans and groans, uh, and and put that on because to begin with on uh, my uh, uh, that feed I I don't have any real trouble with the audio feed uh, those guys I pay them and they go do anything you want to do okay so I thought maybe if I ran that just like on one weekend night or something just to see how many people would be calling each other up going hey you know what I just heard over and see if it like catches fire, you know. Right. Might be a way for That's me to right. might be a way for me to make a living, you know. Yeah, really. Yeah, uh, and steps. and and the people whose porn films I steal, they can't tell it's them anyway. You know, because I'm only going to do people just moaning and groaning and humping and thumping, you know. But, so this friend of mine, speaking of porn and stuff, this friend of mine sends me a video. Oh, uh, with this kid, this like 25 year old Latino kid talking about how to check your testicles for cancer. He strips nude. He's in the shower. This is on YouTube. Really? I can't believe it. Is that and, and absolutely. And he, he, you know, and he, and he fondles his testicles and stuff, shows you how to check them for lumps and stuff like that. And then a little, you know, three second speech. He's called Johnny Rapid. I'm like, okay, I've got to look this up. Who the fuck is Johnny Rapid? He's a, a world famous gay porn star, but he's married to a woman. I don't get all that, but whatever. <laughs> and uh, he's got he's got like 200 porns under his name. And I'm like, I never heard of this guy. I don't watch. I guess I don't watch the right porn. I'm not watching gay yeah. porn. But I'm like, I mean, this this was kind of just like weird, and I couldn't believe that YouTube allowed it. So, oh, there's Jack. There's Jack. He's waving Jack, his finger. You want me to send you a copy, Jack? <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah. Hey, now this is serious stuff, though. Uh, I had a cousin who developed testicular cancer, and he lost one. This is about the fourth time that I brought up. A, How do you a, develop a testicular cancer in a dark room? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. But, you know, this is stuff that men never talk to other men about. What? Right. what? It's all good down there. Hasn't worked in five years, but what the hell? <laughs> it's well done. It's just him. There's no, I mean, you know, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, well I done. Just, it's I, well I, done. I, it's art. It's art. That's why I'm watching it. It's my friend art. My says to me, can you believe that they'll allow this on YouTube? And I'm like, I, I guess. And, you know, and, and I'm like, why well, would they Well, I mean, you that? know, uh, it, it, here's the thing that bothers me about YouTube is they would kind of maybe complain about something like that. And they really shouldn't because that is, I think, an important message to get across, you know. Uh, well, it's demoed right in, your, in front of you, you know, and stuff. And I mean, he does an okay job. He's not an actor of, of, of like being able to talk to people. I'm sure he's a lot of. I wonder if I could do lot. one just on how to masturbate. Well, you should ask him. You know, an instructional video, how to masturbate. Yeah. Well, yeah. Huh? 
Mm. So my, like yeah, my friend sent me at it and says, can you believe what they put on YouTube nowadays? I said, what were you searching for when you found this? When You're they like, asked you that question, you should say, have you seen the Alex Bennett program? Yeah, really, there you go. Yeah. Can you believe what they put on YouTube? I always like the way Jack, when he calls us, is hiding behind his microphone. Well, wait a minute. That's Let me take a look. Show. Oh, yeah. that's better. It, it doesn't have to be in front of you. It could be off to the side. We'd still well, hear you. I'm not so sure how sensitive. Well, let's see. I, yeah. oh, that's uh, fine. Okay, how's that? That's fine. Oh, yeah. Is that okay? That's good. Okay. And move your camera a little bit so we see your full face so you don't look like Kilroy was here. Well, I am Kilroy. Yeah, there we go. See, you know, right. Jack, you could come on the show on other times. This is about the fourth time I brought up a subject and you came <laughs> in. And that's good. But, uh, you know, it'd be nice to see your smiling eyes on other times, too. So t you had a friend who developed a testicular cancer. No, I had a cousin. Cousin. Uh, cousin, yeah. And what they have My to do, favorite cousin. They had to cut the the uh, the testicle out, right? He, he lost a testicle. Yeah. But but my family is extremely resilient. He had already had a child, and then he had another one, which he called his one ball boy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There you I go. He grew another one. <laughs> you no, know, I mean, you know. No, I, I think they put a, a uh, some people with money can get a fake testicle in there. What do they call Prosthetic. Yeah, they have those, you know. Yeah. I'll take I always wanted to ask him if he was carrying around a plastic ball, but I never had the nerve. Well, you know, they do have, they do have, uh, they, in fact, they invented them basically for animals. Yeah. Uh, called uh, nudicles was the name of them. And, mm. and they were plastic uh, balls that you could install yeah. in your cat when you had them deballed. Now, why in the hell would anybody do that? No shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you know, cats get they visibly get depressed when they suddenly are missing their testicles. Yeah. You know. Plus, so, many, so many cats, they, they breed too much, and they all, you know, they end up getting euthanized. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is that, uh, um, you know, I, 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 well, I had a wife, Ronnie. Uh, you, you remember Ronnie, right? Of course. Jack? Uh, Ronnie, um, we had uh, a couple of male cats, and she went and she uh, had one of them altered. And then she had another one of them altered. And then she had the third one altered. And I got rid of her before she got around to me. <laughs> That's good. She's coming. Funny. Yeah. Alex, if this was the intersection, with a line like that, I'd have to... Hit the bell for you. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, that's why I wouldn't tell a joke on your show, because I don't want you hitting that goddamn bell. <laughs> I'm hurt. I ought to I gotta come on your show. <laughs> you ought to. I, I guess I'm going to have to download and install, get somebody that can help me with Skype. Skype is the easiest thing to install. Okay, I'm going to try it you again. You just go, go to Skype, download it, and it's uh, from there on in, you're ready to go. Except for they want to, it's Microsoft, so they want to ask you a bunch of personal questions. But what personal questions? I don't know. I, I can't remember. It just, I don't know. I'll look into it again. Yeah. Well, you've already had instructions on how to inspect your ball, so how much more personal can you get? <laughs> yeah, well, that was on YouTube, not on, I guess well, I can YouTube yeah. and figure out how to work Skype. Yeah. Uh, 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 Jack was going to go to Zoom, and I just said to him, you know, as long as you've been working with Skype and it's been working okay, you know, all you're going to miss is Alan, and that's not missing much. So, no. uh, <clears throat> you know, but no, it's, it's. I think that's why he comes here is for Alan. Hell, I mean, uh, fi uh, Phil, Phil, um, uh, make up your mind. G uh, our our good friend uh, Jeff, uh, yeah. uh, Jeff had. Uh, Skype, and he used to use Skype, right, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Yep. Used to come on the show all the time. We, we used to talk socks. And now I can't get it to work. You can't get Skype oh. to at work? See? I don't know if the Skype is. And this is strange. I can listen to his show mm -hmm. like an hour and a half or two hours after, but not when it's being started. Why? Which means I really can't talk on it. What do you mean you can't? Wow. You can't listen to. What do you mean you can't? You you I can't, can't you, watch, stream it. 
to work. You you can't Skype, get Skype to work. I, I don't know. If Skype is the problem because I think Skype is the easiest thing in the world. Well, Zoom is pretty damn easy. Zoom is idiot proof. Well, I, I've I've given up on on uh, Jack coming on to Zoom, so I guess I'm going to have to go to Skype. No, no, it isn't that you give up on it. I just told him as long as you got Skype working fine for you, why go to Zoom? You know. So Alan could get on yeah. the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll work on it again, Jack. Yeah. And we yeah, will lay hands say... on your Skype system for you. Yes. All right. Charlie and I will do that, <laughs> oh, and it yeah. shall work. Yeah. All right, good. If you say so, Jack, I'm sure that somebody heard you. So anyway, phone. should I announce it on tomorrow night's show? Uh, 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 Kathleen will be doing jumping jacks. <laughs> really? I thought we were going to have Marla Maples on. Oh. Do you, do you, I always hated that in porn films where some guy is interviewing some woman, you know, and they're going to going to be her first porn thing and they get her to stand up and say, uh, "Do jumping jacks." Yeah. You're going, "Why are you doing that?" Yeah. What? Are you trying to knock the woman out? What were really? you what are you doing? I always found that obnoxious. You know, but anyway. So I assume that your talk show, Jack, is just like this one? No, no, no. No, no. no it's nothing like this one. Nothing, nothing at all. It's good. Okay. <laughs> well, that helped me a lot. Hmm? That yeah. helped me a lot. I guess I'll, I'll watch He's it. He's got a good show, times. believe me. He's got a very good show. Okay, well. Yeah. I, I think, we get, a, I think we get a little sillier. Yeah. Sometimes than oh, okay. the the intersection uh, uh, rather than the ramble on the intersection. Uh -huh. I mean, I would like I would like him to be able to do a show like this where he has video. Uh, but well, that's why you said but, you said you you didn't want me to do that a, a, a year no, ago. No, no, no. I didn't want you to do it because I didn't want the pain in the ass that it would be having to put up with you. Getting up to speed, running a video show. You you had enough trouble at that time running an audio show. Well, the problem I was having w was a matter of nomenclature. You know, you and I talked about that. It was the t you know. Well, I finally had to explain it to you in radio terms, and I had yeah, to explain yeah. that the encoder was like the transmitter. Yeah, and the yeah. Was you know, once, you know yeah. once we got the nomenclature down, all right. It, it, yeah. Don't forget, boy. You know, I worked in smaller companies than you did. Where the engineers came in and said, "Don't touch anything." Oh, they they always said that to me too. Of course, I, when I got to a certain point in my career, I never had to touch anything anyway. It was only in the last two jobs that I had. Yeah. That I, I didn't have to. What what was the trick? Didn't have to be a combo man. Once I once I wound up, once I wound up in Chicago. I, wait a minute, I'm trying to think. Minneapolis, did I have to run a board? In, yeah, I had to in Minneapolis. But once I got to Chicago, I never had to run another board again. Oh, you had the sweetest deal in radio when you were in Chicago, man, as far as staff behind you. What do you mean? I mean, well, let's see. Co correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. You had a uh, engineer. Had an engineer. I had a, a, a musician. A producer. A producer. A musician. A musician who was... Yeah, and I and the musician, the musician, the mus he t he just turned your records on for you. No, the musician was in the same room I was in with two turntables. Yeah, and a music stand with the playlist on it, and he was from the musicians' union, and he and didn't then, you have a staff announcer? Uh, well, I had a newsman by the name of Don Cornelius. I think I've heard oh, of him. Oh wow! Yeah, I never heard of that guy. Yeah, Don Cornelius was my newsman. So Skype is not video, it's just talk? No, Skype is video. Oh, you said something about Zoom versus Skype and you were afraid. Well, no, I just been having to get him to learn how to go onto YouTube and how to oh. put, how to uh, encode the program to YouTube. It's it's a long, it's a pretty big process. Yeah, I don't care about it. I just want to get on the show and talk, so okay. Well, uh, you know, just... Well, you're more than welcome. You All know right, what you, you know what you can do? Uh, there There is a... No, we don't have the phone number anymore. We used to have a phone number yeah. where you could call the phone number and and get on. And I did away with that. 
Hey, listen, I got to go, but I want to ask you one real quick question, Alex. Y- yeah. Did you get the little thing that I sent you today? What was that? I sent you a 1960s oh, I can't, uh, 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 the, playlist from, from K- KILT in Houston. Yeah, but it didn't have my picture on it. Well, I thought you might like it any damn way. I don't give a shit. You know, I don't want to see the mugs Next of all time the other. Send them nudicles, Jack. Yeah, I want nudicles. <laughs> you know, Jeez. Anyway. come join us for the intersection after the top of the hour. I I will absolutely. I will be be listening to it right here as I do each and every evening and savoring every word of wisdom that you impart. And sometimes wow. correcting me for misquoting something. Uh, or or having misinformation about something. Or having misinformation. But some, uh, there was one piece of information you imparted the other night that I was going to call you on, and then I just went, eh, I don't know. Well, maybe I just lied about it. No, <laughs> you know, maybe no, I just forgot no, what it was. No, it was something, it had, something that had to do with, uh, with uh, uh, I don't know, some, something with one of the radio people, one of the radio stars from the old days. But I can't remember what it was. Ooh. Oh, I can't remember that. Yeah, but, you know, I'll... I'll uh, I'll be happy to... Was it anything to do with Bennett Gordon Schwarzman? No, no, no. Well, who gives a shit if it isn't about... Bennett you? Gordon Schwarzman. Yeah. yeah. Talk to you at the top of the hour. I'll see you later. Uh, uh, whatever uh, name he's currently using. Y- whatever cu- right, name yeah. you're currently <laughs> using. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're getting close to the end of the program. Oh, he's, now he's having to turn his Zoom off. Oh, okay. All right. He managed to do it. Oh, look, Boy, there's Rocky, the dog. He's almost home. He's almost home. Is that his whoopee? Is that what he likes to play with? By the way, i got to tell this quickly to, to Kathleen because she'll appreciate this. I'm, I wish I, I should have put had the picture in here so I could pu- put it on. Walking, down the, walking through the park, and there's a guy walking in front of me on his shoulder looking at me. Is an iguana. Aw. Yeah. So I took a picture of him. And the guy said, don't do that. I went, you're walking Good down grief. the fucking street. Where? With an iguana like it was a part of your outfit. You know, uh, I think that's an interesting picture. I think I'll put it up on Facebook so you can see it. Because it really yes. was a, yeah. Why didn't he want a picture of his iguana? I mean. I don't know. Was the iguana just. Freshly nude. I don't something? even know how he knew I was taking a picture of him. Oh, that's you know because I was behind him and I kind of telescoped in or you know zoomed in to show this uh, this iguana on he just walking down the street with his iguana on his shoulder. Could you have done that with your iguana? Uh, yes. Kathleen? They they are that docile that way. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Best pet I ever had. I know you love that animal. What was his name? Guido. 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 Yeah, and there was old. You don't know whether they're male or female until they're about three years old, and so she was already named Guido, and you know, three years later we find out she's a girl. But you know, boy, that's got to be that's got to be upsetting to the animal to not know what gender they are. (laughs) You know, I mean, how are they going to do videos about testicular cancer? That's right. Well. And so that's my last joke for tonight. Okay, time for the theme to play. Yeah, it's been kind of nice tonight. It's just been easy. We, mellow. We, yeah, mellow. We haven't talked about politics particularly. Anytime yeah. you want Jack on the show, just have me bring up a topic. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> we didn't that even get into those morons topic. in Congress today who decided oh. they weren't going to wear a mask. Fine, let it get them and kill them. Who cares? I don't care. If they want to thin out their breed, all the better. I'm for it. Hey, yeah, Jeff, thank you. Thank you to uh, Trucker Steve. He's here every night, and we love having him here. Just it, it, He fills up a square, and we just feel, makes us feel warm and cozy. <laughs> Alan, thank you for being there. Charlie, thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. I appreciate it. I want to thank you, John Larkin. Haven't said much tonight, but always love having you here. Uh, and uh, also thanks to Jack Bishop, thanks to Ray Renati, and thanks to uh, Brian Neary, all of whom participated in this evening's program. Why don't you all give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave b- goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel, 
and uh, let me hang up on them unceremoniously. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, up next, uh, Jack Bishop. The intersection. His uh, Skype uh, uh, address is Gabnet Live. Gabnet Live. G A B N E T L I V E. I'll see you again tomorrow night, 10:30 Eastern Daylight Time, for more of the ramble. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there and make sure you wear a mask if you haven't been vaccinated. And if you've been vaccinated, have a beer on me. Bye.